Hey everybody, it's Vince from Spradley Kia here in Pueblo, Colorado. And today I have a 2023 Kia Telluride SX Prestige in donning red with the mahogany interior. Uh, it's one of the new interior uh, colors for this year and it looks pretty good uh, in person. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna go over the everyday features that the uh, average person want to know about this car. And probably I'm gonna include a thing or two that the the rare customer will probably know about this car and i bet you there's some features in this vehicle that you won't find anywhere else on youtube um, that i'm going to go over and that's going to include kind of the ultra rare hidden feature of the lumbar massaging setting so um, i haven't really found that anywhere else on youtube but i'm going to point it out here today so let's just start right away this again is the 2023 uh, Kia Telluride in donning red with mahogany interior. It is the 3.8 uh, liter V6 engine. Right away off the front, you see the new redesigned daytime running lights uh, on the 2023. The SX Prestige no longer has the amber daytime running lights. They do have the uh, LED uh, clear lights, which are pretty cool. Um, I do like the fact that they have kept the tiger nose grille almost the same. You're going to see the silver outline here um, that's going to be looking just a little bit different than previous models. And then you have the big Kia uh, symbol right there on the front, which I've always been a fan of. One thing that's missing from this vehicle, let's see if you guys can catch it, is it no longer says Telluride across the front of the, uh, of the hood there. So no more Telluride on the front of the hood. They've redesigned this lower bumper down here. Uh, and then you can see the fog lights have a redesign as well, which um, I actually do like the fog lights. You see the forward sensors there. And then again, you have the uh, daytime running lights there in the clear. I do like the Michelin tires on 20-inch uh, wheels. Uh, pretty cool for, uh, for Kia. Uh, people seem to love that on the Telluride. Uh, and I love it myself as well. I'm gonna come up here. On the mirror caps, it is the uh, same color caps with a little black on the bottom uh, right there, which I think blends very well with this car. And then you have your LED uh, turn signals right there as well. Uh, you can see the camera on the side there, which um, has a lot of functionality uh, in the settings, which we will go over. Now this car has a digital key system, so you do not have to actually um, have your key fob with you. You can, right here on the door handle, there's a little nub there, which if you press with your thumb, it'll open and it'll lock and unlock the door. But if you have a smartphone, you should be able to swipe your smartphone on that key, uh, on that lock, and then it'll also unlock for you as well. Kind of a new feature in the 2023 SX Prestiges and the SX, SX Pros. You do have your push to open gas cap, which if the car is unlocked, you just press it and it opens. If the car is locked, then that guy does not open. Coming along here to the back, you're gonna see Kia and Telluride big and bold there on the center, which is pretty cool. You're gonna see the four x four logo on the right hand side and Kia no longer badges these guys with a trim level. So you're not gonna see SX uh, like in previous years or you're not gonna see SX Pro uh, badged on the back. You do have their kind of redesigned back bumper here. I'm personally going to give that a thumbs down. I'm not a big fan of that. I like the previous uh, 2022 models and below better. Um, but they did uh, try something new here on the back with the bumpers. And then you can see those uh, parking sensors and the, the rear sensors right there. You got your shark fin up top. And then you have your standard uh, windshield wiper right there. You can always open the car with the key fob. You have a button inside the vehicle and right underneath the U right here, you can press it and then it'll auto pop the trunk. This particular vehicle uh, came with uh, carpeted mats for the cargo area and then your floor mats right here. So this is kind of what it would look like if it came from the factory. Um, so I do not have the third row up, but a full size adult can fit in the third row. I could fit in the third row just fine. I've traveled uh, many hundreds of miles in the third row of a Telluride and, and I was honestly comfortable. So uh, you, 
of being an adult in the third row, definitely not, not a horrible experience. And I'm five, nine hundred and eighty pounds ish. So you do have the little seatbelt clips here that can clip with the seatbelt into the wall there to, to give you extra, extra room. Um, the way that they have this seat folded right now, it kind of twisted the belt so it doesn't really fit in there that great right now. So I'm going to give that a little bit of a thumbs down. Um, but that's just kind of whoever set this car up kind of did it. So, um, here on the left hand side, we do have a 12 volt, uh, port there. And then you have those two buttons to lift and raise, I'm sorry, just to, to put down the second row seats. So your second row seats right there. So if I were to press this R button that seat falls and so we call that near flat but on this particular model um, well this telluride it's pretty much flat so that's kind of cool and other vehicles that kia makes you know there's sometimes a little bit of a slant so uh you do have child anchor locks in all the seats which are really cool so you can kind of see that right there on the back of the captain's chair um so if you have a, a little guy in a car seat or a little girl in a car seat uh it does kind of uh kind of latch right there for uh, for safety and it's actually really snug i've had many many customers with with children that you know the car seats fit perfectly fine in there in your third row uh your people do have usb ports in the walls right there on the left and then over on the right so uh, you could charge phones and tablets and all that good stuff with the usb c's back there um, you have cup holders and, and right there for, for your armrest for the third row as well but that is just kind of the view of the third row and the functionality functionalities of the cargo area. You kind of got a good look at the back light right here too, which not a lot of people notice or tend to see. And then you can also manipulate it here with this little toggle switch, how you want that light to turn on. So um, then you can kind of get a good glance there of the sensors in the vehicle. And then this premium headliner at the top, which is black in color with the mahogany interior, which I'm a big fan of. All right, let's go into the second row. Before I do that, I'm gonna stop off at the window sticker and I'm gonna kind of tell you guys what the differences are when you get into an SX Prestige Telluride. So it's gonna be right there. You're gonna have the digital rear view mirror, which is really cool. Uh, it's my one of my new favorite features on Telluride uh, for the those the SX Prestige trim level. Napa leather, heated and ventilated second row seats, heads up display, the 110 uh, inverter outlet, and the rain sensing wipers. So let's take a look at the second row. So second row, get a good glimpse of this interior in here. This is the mahogany. Um, you can kind of see it there. It's, it's that kind of rich brown. It reminds me of a F-150 uh, King Ranch uh, interior, which not a fan of the F-150s myself, but I do love that color. Um, so sue me on that. Uh, you do have your airbags in the seats right here. So if there is a, a collision, uh, the airbags do pop out of your seats there on the passenger and there on the driver. Uh, and then you have uh, basically a bar that goes down the door. You can't see it obviously, but there's probably about a bar right here uh, to help with impacts as well. So you may ask, hey, how do I get into my third row uh, for my Telluride? Well, you can press this button right here, or you can press this button right here. And then if you do, the seat kind of slides forward. And then you have a little hand hook right here, a little hand grippy to uh, put your hand to climb into that third row. Uh, if you're little, you can go down the row uh, right there and easily get in and out. But if you're someone like my size, you're not gonna be able to do that. Uh, here's another little seatbelt hook. I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this in one-handedly. And then this guy just goes right in there pretty snug. That way the seatbelt's kind of out of the way. So it's pretty easy to move back one-handedly. And this is also a good point to illustrate that this second row seat is fully adjustable. So this handle here uh, will move the seat, uh, this guy forward and backwards so you could do a recline. Uh, but you do have a bar underneath right there and with that bar i'm going to just do it one-handedly you can slide it back to you know a further back position um, but it, it's multiple lengths there so you have a lot of room in the second row so let me just go ahead and hop in here all right first and foremost you want to notice the leg room this is seated all the way back um i have plenty of leg room between my knees and and the uh, plastic of the back seat 
Um, you also have little hooks here for garments or for bags. That way you can easily reach across. Like if you were the passenger and you want to get into your purse or bag, you would hang it here so you could do an easy reach across. You have USB-C charger ports in the second row seats right there. You have your drinks holders right there. And then you also have drink holders down here in the cup, in the door handle as well. So you have many, many places to put drinks in this vehicle. And then again, you have your heated seats and your air conditioned seats for your second row passengers, as well as a sunshade right here. So the sunshade goes up, kind of hooks into those hooks, and then you have a nice little sunshade. Pretty nifty. Um, what else do I want to point out back here? Climate. So your second row passengers can control their own climate um, as long as you don't have it locked up front. So I do not have it locked up front, but as the driver or the people in the front cabin, you can lock it. That way your second row people can't fiddle with it. You do have your directionals up here, so you can turn that open or closed. You can kind of see what a closed one looks like right over there. You have your lights, easy tap lights, and then you can set your directionals if you want it on your face or if you want it um, down on the feet, and then your blower speeds are right here. Set to auto, it's gonna auto go to 72, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back off. You have your side curtain airbags that come out of the A-pillar right there. And then I'm just gonna give you a little overview of what the, uh, kind of the main cabin looks like for the driver's side. You have your aluminum sport pedals on the SX Prestige down there, uh, which I really do enjoy. I've had that in a couple of Kias now, and I'm a big fan of those aluminum sport pedals. And, coming back here if you're a fan of camping or if you have if you work from the vehicle and you need to plug in your laptop you do have a 115 uh, plug right there and then another 12 volt right there not too shabby definitely a great vehicle uh, if you are working a lot in the in you know from your car I've sold these to a lot of realtors uh, construction guys I mean foremans that kind of thing it's it's definitely a, a good vehicle. All right, I don't really have any downsides of the second row. Very comfy, and I'm sure anyone would enjoy that. Let me turn off the air-conditioned seats, and then we're gonna get out. This would be a good point to mention that if you uh, are within a couple hundred mile radius of me and would like to order a vehicle or had questions on a vehicle, feel free to contact me. Um, that's something I can definitely help you with here in Southern Colorado. Um, I've sold many cars out of state, um, so it's definitely something that I always like to point out. And don't forget to boop that like and subscribe button if you like what you see and want to see more of my content. All right, let's go into my favorite part of the car because this is where I spend a lot of time in the car and this is where I'm going to show you a lot of cool features is going to be the driver's side. So right away, let's just start from left to right. You have your child lock windows right here. You have your one, tup, one touch windows right there. You have your lock and unlock and then your windows uh, for the folding of the mirror. So this button here will fold your mirrors in. Pretty nifty. I'm going to show you something else about the mirrors here in just a second. So right here on the driver's side seat, you have your lumbar support, uh, you have your forward and backward right here, your up and down uh, also right there um, to tilt the, the back of the, of the seat. And then you have your thigh extender, which is not in all models, but in the SX Prestige it is. So that's kind of cool. You have your thigh extender. I've had a lot of requests from the, for that uh, from really tall people. Coming here to the panel on the left, you have your illumination button that'll illuminate the screens I'm going to be showing you here in just a second. You have your downward heel assist, your hold button to open and close the trunk, and then your traction control. Okay, let's pop into the driver's seat. Let me show you a couple of things here. So let's start with the mirror. You do have blind spot detectors there in that mirror. And then if you have the uh, mirror set up a certain way and you throw it in reverse you're going to notice that mirror tilts down which is really cool so i'm going to go ahead and put it back into park that mirror tilts up so if you have one of these vehicles and it stops doing that what happened was right here your mirror toggle switch has to be either on the left or the right side if it is just in the middle your mirrors will not go down when you put it in reverse. 
So that's a very common question. I get it all the time. Hey Vince, my mirror stopped tilting. What am I doing wrong? The thing is broken. Usually it's the thing is broken, never what am I doing wrong. But it is going to be right here. You just make sure it's toggled either left or right. Put your foot on the brake, hit reverse, and then those mills, those mirrors will auto tilt. Same thing on the EV6 and then on the high end Tellurides as well. Okay, so right away, let's start with climate because I am boiling in here. It's actually a pretty hot day here in Colorado. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the AC on. I'm gonna do my dual climate control down to low. I'm gonna hit sync right there. If you hit sync, it is going to pair your temperature to the driver. And then you have your uh, recirculated air, your rear defroster's AC. You always wanna make sure that's on if it's super hot outside. Your directionals of where you want the air to go, either feet, face, or both. Uh, this is you can also click the button here for the rear climate if you press it you're going to see that screen up there is going to go into the rear climate and that is where you can lock your controls like i was saying you can change the auto fog um, and then you can play around with temperature so that's by hitting the rear button there you also have your blower speeds here so usually i like to set mine on low and then just manipulate these blower speeds that's kind of how i drive uh, but everybody's different you have your front uh, defroster and then you can turn the whole thing off to turn it back on, all you do is click a button and then it'll go back on. I want to point out you have your hazards right here. So when you press that, you're going to see your hazards uh, pop on. Uh, so that's just that flashing red triangle right there. Okay, let's get into kind of the, the front cluster here, the cluster right in front of you. Uh, let's just start with your auto light stick right here, your light stick. I always like it set to auto. That way your lights turn on and off as the sun goes up and down. Uh, I'm just that kind of person, uh, but you can always manipulate your lights however you want. And then you can see the little menu pop up right there. But I'm gonna go ahead and set that back to auto. You have your digital assistant uh, for Kia or your Apple CarPlay or your Android Auto. You press that a certain way, either a, a slight press will activate just the car's system. Sorry, I didn't understand you. Exactly. Please. So, I mean, I always give the Kia's audio system a little bit of a thumbs down because um, it does learn with you a little bit, but it's always, I, I just prefer Apple CarPlay um, or Android Auto. You have your different mode button right here. A lot of people are like, hey, what does mode do? Mode is going to change your music preferences. So when I click mode, you're going to get this screen and you can select which items you use. So you have FM, AM, well, not AM anymore, but just FM, USB music, sounds of nature, phone projection, which is Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, uh, or your Bluetooth. So let's say you only use sounds of nature and Bluetooth. You can just select them. And then when you cycle through mode, it'll only play those two things. So I'm just gonna turn everything off. You have your answer call right here, and then you have a star button. Anytime you have star, you wanna press it, and then you can set that up as a customizable button. So on this guy, you can have reject or end a call, change uh, device, so if you have multiple people in the car, privacy, passenger talk, which we'll get to, voice memo, home, map, reroute, cancel, quiet mode, radio, all that kind of good stuff. Um, most of the time, and I'm just gonna put, well, you would have probably reject or end a call, just because it's kind of muscle memory when you're right here, you're like, oh, I'm gonna accept a call, gonna decline a call. But anytime you see a star on a Kia, it is a customizable button. Okay, let's move on to the right-hand side. So you have your cruise control right here. It's, uh, you can't really demonstrate cruise control when you're uh, parked. But you got cruise control there. You've got the toggle switch where you move up and down, which will manipulate your cruise control settings. And then you have right here is adaptive cruise control. So again, I can't really demonstrate it while the car is sitting, but that guy is car length. So you can set up to four car lengths uh, with you. And you will, if the car in front of you does 100 and you have it at two car lengths, you will stay two car lengths behind them. You will do 100. They do 10 miles an hour. You will do 10 miles an hour. You have forward lane assist. So this vehicle does have the um, ability to move you into the center of the lane when you are, you know, veering off of it. So right up here, you see your lane keep assist icon, which is the car with the two lines. And then you have your little steering wheel there, which is forward lane assist. So every time you get in the car, you would want to press that button if you want that feature where it moves you into the center of the lanes. It uses the radar and LIDAR and all the sensors that this guy has up in this black box up here um, and in the forward sensors on the grill to keep you in the lane. 
if you're like on a two lane road or where the lanes are kind of hard to navigate, it uses those sensors to track the car in front of you and keep you with that car. So kind of cool. I use it a lot. My wife uses it a lot. It's, it's one of my favorite, uh, favorite features there. And then you have your two pages button right there. So I'm still surprised I get a lot of questions on the two pages button because you could just press it and you can see it does move you from left to right in those settings. And then the toggle switch below it, that guy right there, also when you press it in, you select OK, but you can move up and down and you can move up and down in these pages. So there's your driving info, sensory fueling, accumulated info, and down there you can see how it says press OK to reset. So if you ever have to engage something, you just press OK to reset. You have your digital speedometer right there, and then it's all right there in those toggle switches. Now, personally, I'm gonna go ahead and press that one more time. I like to keep mine right here in my vehicle uh, because I like to see like the all wheel drive and the power that the, each wheel is getting. I live in Colorado, so sometimes the roads are a little rough um, and I like to see my in all wheel drive all of a sudden if I'm just using the front wheel drive, um, like where the power is on the wheels. And I, I've just been lately a fan of that setting right there. One thing that's really cool in this vehicle is blind spot monitoring view. So that is a live photo right there, a live view of your blind spot. And it's just when you turn the blinker on left or right, it does appear in those circles, which is kind of cool. All right, you do have a HUD display up here. Let's see if you can see it. There's the, there it is down there in the, in the, in the dash. But if you can see it directly in front of me, you can see the um, speed limit indicator, you can see your miles per hour, um, depending upon your cruise control settings, your cruise control settings are up there. Um, really, really cool. We'll take a look at some of the HUD settings here in just a second. But I just want to point that out. I'm going to go ahead down here and turn my air conditioning seats on because, like I said, it's, it's getting hot in this car uh, sitting in the sun. You have your uh, heated seats and air conditioning seats right there. You have your wireless phone charger down here in this little cubby, as long as you're another 12 volt USB, USB port and a USB-C. And you have your passenger controls right there as well for your passenger. So pretty cool there. Let's just kind of move down here real quick. You have your gear shifter. So just park, reverse, neutral, and drive. And then if you are in drive, you can throw this into a sport mode by popping the handle to the left. And now I don't know if you can tell up there, I am in first gear and then I can go to second gear and then you just shift through the gears while you're moving. And then whenever you're done, when you don't wanna play around in sport mode anymore, just pop it back to the right. So you can do that while driving. It is not gonna hurt you. Put that back up there and park. You do have your little change holder right there, your cup holders right here, and then kind of your center console right here. You see that you have Actually, there's kind of a glare here. Let me see if I get out of this glare for the sun. All right, sorry about that. A little bit of a glare, but now you can see, you can see the highlighted of the orange. So I'm in comfort mode. There's a sport, a smart, an eco, and a snow. And then you have, can lock your rear wheels by pressing that center in there. So that way you lock your rear wheels uh, if the weather is that bad. Now, one thing that you can do is if, take a look at those clusters. If you change the driving modes, like an Eco, you can kind of see it changes what those do. So you can set a theme and leave it on one particular theme um, in the settings, or you can set it set to drive mode, which I have it set to now. And every time you switch a drive mode, it's going to switch up on you, which some people like, some people don't. That's why they make it an option. You have your auto off feature here. So that's the feature where like on a nice day and all the right conditions are met, you go into park, uh, you're, you go in like at a red light or like at a drive through and then the car will look, act like it's shutting down. And then to engage it again, you just hit the gas and you just automatically engage. You have auto holds, which is quietly my favorite feature of any Kia. Um, I use a lot of drive through. I, I pick up my kid from practice. You press your foot down on the brake, you press auto hold and then you will go into a park mode. And what that does is, oh, my massaging seats just kicked in. Oh man, has it been 30 minutes already? Yep, it's been 30 minutes since I've turned the car on. Oh, I was gonna get to that. Hopefully I was gonna be at the same spot, but the massaging seat lumbar just kicked in on this car. Uh, let me blow through this real quick and we'll get to it. Um, you have your electronic parking brake right here, and then you have your camera. So if you press your camera button there, you're gonna see 
your rear view, but you also have this augmented reality view here, which is your vehicle in real time, uh, a real camera view. So I'm not still 100% convinced I know what this feature is for, um, unless you're being chased by somebody or dogs, or I don't know, but you have this, uh, oh, that massaging seat just kicked in again. Okay, we'll get to that in a second, because that's really cool. Um, but yeah, I don't, uh, I don't quite understand, understand that. Um, but it's kind of cool. You have your different tow modes here, so you can go into your, a normal mode. You can go into like a like a backup mode. You can do your sides, and then you can see just like your standard uh, rear view with guidance. So when you move your tires, you can see what you're being backed up and how you're guiding into. Okay, that massaging seat feature goes in for a while because it is still going. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So right now, Kia Telluride 2023 SX Prestige has a feature that not a lot of people know about. I Like I said, I, I don't think I've found it on YouTube before. You go into seats, you have the lumbar stabilization, stabilization system while driving. So you can set this to every 30 minutes, every 60 minutes, or you can just turn it off. Um, it's set to every 30 minutes as of right now, but I started the car a couple minutes before I started the video and it is still going. So it's been going for a while. It's, what it's doing is it is moving up and down my back, giving me like a gentle massage for my lumbar. Uh, I wanna hop out of the car and see if I can see it actually moving um, because I've never actually done that before, but let's see what it's doing. I don't feel it. Oh, no, I do feel it. Do you see it moving? There it goes. Super cool. Uh, I do feel it moving on my hand. I don't know if you can see it in the video kind of pulsating in and out, but what it's doing is it is rolling. Oops, let me, it is rolling up and down my back to about right here. And so it is rolling up and down gently, giving me a little gentle lumbar massage. So what that hopefully means, if Kia is listening, which I don't know if they subscribe to my channel, but hopefully that means we're gonna get that feature as an option to turn on whenever we want in upcoming models because they have it here snuck into the seat feature of the SX Prestige and the SX Pros, um, but it is not a feature that, um, that is really um, known about, which is kind of cool. So I just want to point that out there. Um, while we're here, let's just go into vehicle settings. Well, actually, no, let's not. Let's kind of just do this how I normally do. So this is your infotainment system, which is really cool. Um, you have your map layout right here. You have your time index right there. Um, oh, look, lower back pain relief phase one completed. I wonder how many phases there are. Interesting. Okay, but so let's say we click the map feature takes you right into maps. The little house takes you home, so that'll always take you to the main screen here. But there's something I want to point out in maps. You can go to your search icon right there with the magnifying glass, type in where you want to go, and, and it'll get you there. You also can, again, use your feature right here to dictate where you want to go. You know, use your voice, just say, like, get directions to such and such place, and then it will do that for you. Going back a step here. This little triangle right there will open up the try screen. That way you have this third row uh, for you to manipulate. And then you can add different content here. And when you hook your phone up to it, it will uh, give you the, yeah, give the access to your calendar or your weather. So that's all when you hook your phone up to it. You do have passenger talk, which is really cool. That's the intercom in this car. So if I press that button, I still don't know if you can really hear it uh, with just the video but it activates the intercom between the uh, front and the back. So pretty nifty there. And little house again, takes you home. Navigation menu, it's gonna take you into your, your save places. You can save your work, your home address, a bunch of favorites. It'll show you near Kia dealerships, traffic, your POI categories. I used this when I was traveling to California. Um, you know, we wanted to find restaurants, either fast food or sit down and we were able to do that. Again, you can click this little arrow here to, to make that bigger. So um, I do think POI categories is fairly useful. Little house takes you back to the main screen, but little arrow takes you back to the previous screen. So I'm just gonna little arrow back. 
these are kind of self-explanatory. You can Bluetooth your phone. You can have phone projection, which this card does support Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but you do, new, you do need a USB cable to do so. Only the lower trim level Kias have wireless Apple CarPlay. So that's like your Kia Forte, your low level Kia Souls. The expensive stuff still uh, still has the, uh, has the cords. You can do voice memos. You can control your climate, valet mode, passenger talk we just talked about. Quiet mode is pretty cool, but I can't really demonstrate it without getting flagged from YouTube. Um, when quiet mode is selected, all radio and media is played only in the front speakers. Uh, all volume is automatically lowered um, from the higher levels and they only play in the front speakers. So if you have people sleeping back there, uh, they will be able to uh, enjoy their nap without being bothered by all the loud music. HD radio is not high definition radio. It's actually a company called HD. Um, and that if you're in a bigger city, uh, you'll have like Doppler radar traffic and fuel prices. I live in a pretty small town. So if I click Doppler radar, it's gonna say no information received. You need to be in a larger metropolitan area for those features to work. Um, Cause that's just kind of the area where it's described from. Setup, radio, media, Kia Connect notifications and user's, user's manual. Let's hit Kia Connect because your salesperson should be going over this with you. Um, Kia Connect, pretty cool. You have built-in roadside assistance on a brand new vehicle, five year 60 roadside for free. Um, you don't have to carry roadside's number. You can just click into Kia Connect, click that roadside button, and then it'll call them if your phone is paired to it. You also have the buttons up here for Kia Connect and roadside assistance as well to, uh, to, get, you, to get you the help that you need. Let's go into Kia Connect, set, Kia Connect settings. You have 911 Connect. Uh, when you activate that, um, it'll pair to your phone. So if you're ever in an accident and the airbags deploy, uh, it will call 911 for you. Activate service is the Kia Connect activate service, and that is the app for your phone. So that's remote climate control, remote uh, lock and unlock, auto start, all that good stuff. Uh, you do get it free for the first year, and after that, that's a subscription. So. Uh, you do get that, but you have to set it up in the car. Your salesperson should be doing this for you because uh, it's part of what we have to do with every new car um, purchase. So if, they, if they're not doing that with you, they're not doing their job properly and, and uh, that's not a good thing. So let's go back a couple of steps. One thing I want to point out, I'm not going to see if I can scoot this all along just a bit because we're getting a little long here, is go to setup. You have user profile start there whenever you're setting up the features where you want to do with this car in users profile you could name the vehicle you can change between one or two users you could change your image you can link your kia connect account um, and then you have the digital key and smartphone for this vehicle uh, so you can do the digital key uh, or you can link the smartphone um, or you could do both uh, and i'll show you what that means in just a second but set up that first because if you go into vehicle and then start playing around with your settings and then you go in to do the user profile. Um, I've had it in my own personal experience where I spent like 45 minutes getting my car the way I wanted. Then I did my user profile and erased like half the stuff I did. So I had to do it all again. So go to user profile first. Let's just blow through these real quick. Driver's assistance, that's where you can click on all these guys. Everything's manipulatable. So if you think this car should do something or make a sound, or it probably does. But you can turn off the warnings, turn on the warnings for all of your driver assistance. You can set the speed limit, safety warnings. You can set um, all kinds of different stuff in here. You can set up the highway cruise control, the highway cruise assist, all that good stuff. Heads up display, so you can enable it. You can turn it on or off. I've had many customers that just don't like it. Just go in here to heads up and turn it off. But you can also control the, um, the display and you can set the position of where that heads up display is. You can set the rotation. You can go here into content. What I really love is the blind spot safety on the heads up display. Um, it looks really cool. If there's someone in your blind spot, you'll see these little uh, red triangles on the left and the right uh, where they are in, in real time. And it's actually pretty cool. You get the heads up turn by turn navigation and then the driving convenience info. So um, I really do personally, I like the heads up display. Cluster, this is what we were talking about earlier where you can um, set your themes right here. You can do A, B, C, D and dynamic. Let me show you dynamic. Dynamic's really cool, and I'm glad they're adding this into more things. I changed it to dynamic, and now this center console is like the weather outside. So that console is showing a bright sunny day, and if you look out here, we got a couple clouds in the sky, but for the most part, it is a bright sunny day. Um, so that's really cool. If it's starting to rain, it'll start to rain in the cluster. Uh, I'm a big fan of that. I had many people who do not like it, but I actually do like it. 
Um, I'm going to leave it there because it's nice to show customers that that exists when I'm showing the car. This is where you set your service interval and you can turn on and off the welcome sound and then again the content selection uh, for your cluster. So if you don't like the blind spot monitor view or you don't like the icy road warnings, uh, because at about 39 degrees you're going to get a warning saying, hey icy roads, be careful, you can turn that off. You can, turn, you, you can really customize this vehicle the way that you want. I'm going to hit these back arrows a little bit. Uh, we already talked about climate. Um, it's the same thing. You can set your climate features the way you want, your auto defoggers, all that kind of good stuff. Going back into seats, you can change your seat position change alert so you know if someone's messing with your seats. But the most important part of this section is that lumbar stabilizing system, which is really cool. Go into lights, you can do the ambient lighting in the car, which you can set into certain themes or brightnesses. Uh, but you can do your different color themes there or set a custom color with the color wheel. So I'm just going to move this to something weird because, again, it's I like to show it when it's a different color. That way I can show people how to set it. Uh, scooting along door. So you can do the two press lock. So you can do where you press that little button once or twice. And if you press it once, it'll unlock just your door. You press it twice, it unlocks all the doors. But this is also your power liftgate settings. So you have a smart liftgate, an auto liftgate close, which I really like that Kia included this year. Um, that way, when you walk away, that liftgate closes behind you. And then the smart liftgate is when you are near the back of the car um, or approaching with your key, it'll beep at you twice and then open the liftgate. And then I really like that it'll now close the liftgate, which is super, super cool. All right, let's talk digital key. So this is brand new to Kia this year, digital key, what is it? So you can use just your smartphone as a key fob. So if you don't have to carry this big gigantic key fob around, which they're calling the suitcase key, you don't have to carry this guy around with you uh, everywhere you go if you use your smartphone. So you can start the vehicle with your smartphone by enabling the digital key and then putting your phone in the wireless phone charger and then that will start your vehicle. Never used it myself, full disclosure. I've seen a couple of videos on it, seems to work pretty well, um, but that's what you can do. Also, you get one of these things. You get a, a little digital key card. So that's what this is. So you can keep this guy in your wallet, in your purse. Let me just get a good little background there. And this will also start your car. This is your digital card and this is your key card. So you would just click the little button and then you can enable it and set it up. Uh, a lot of people think this just locks the glove box down there because you can lock the glove box, but this is also your smart key. Uh, full disclosure, like I said, never really used it before, but um, it's there. It's something to play around with. I think I'm a little too afraid to never carry a key with me but um, hey, when in a pinch. You can also um, text someone your digital key card and then they can start their car with their smartphone, your car with their smartphone. So um, there's a lot of security in place for that. So I'm not afraid of that being a thing with like auto thefts, but um, it's definitely interesting. I feel like there's something else I wanna talk about. Oh, the mirror. Okay, cool. So let's take a look at this mirror. So it's really, really cool this year. So you have this new, there's your standard mirror. You know, you have your home link at the bottom. So you, if you have a garage door opener, uh, you can program your garage door or electronic gate. But this mirror now is a standard mirror or you can go full on digital, which is really cool. And um, when I put it in reverse, you're gonna see that that mirror tilts a bit also, just like your side mirrors too. So I'm gonna go ahead and back up a bit. And you can kind of see it in action. I like it, I'm a fan, um, especially if there's something on going on behind you and you wanted to like get like a clear picture and the picture clarity on this thing is amazing. Um, but you can press to make this button here, you can press to make it brighter. You can press here to select and adjust the, uh, the menu. I mean, it's actually really, really cool. I'm a big fan. And all you do is pull this little tab down, switch it back to glass. Um, I'm a fan. I think that's pretty cool. And it's really, a lot of people have liked it. I've had a couple people not, but it's actually pretty cool. Um, the digital mirror, it, it's, it's new with the SX Prestige and the SX Prestige Pro. You do have the double sunroofs uh, right here on the, with the premium headliner. Uh, it is still manual. 
uh, so it does not auto close by itself, but it does auto open with these two buttons right here. Pretty nifty. And then that mahogany interior again is all right. Well, that didn't sound good. That truck was backfiring. All right. Well, we have a full service center here and that's probably why they are in service. Uh, did I miss anything? Probably. Uh, this car is really cool. Thanks for sticking with me and going through all the settings and features with me. Um, hopefully you learned something. And again, um, boop that like button if you like what you see. Um, like and subscribe. I try and do a video at least once a week, especially when I have the inventory for it. But this is the 2023 Kia uh, Telluride with the SX Prestige package in donning red with the mahogany interior. Thanks, guys, and I will see you down at the dealership. Thank you.